Hello, I'm really excited about our first um, online activity, which is going to be part of our online co-curriculum. And today I'm going to have a little bit of a science project as well as a little bit arty. Um, and so let's get started. I'm going to share my screen because I want to talk you through a few basics of what we're going to do. Now, this session is called Making a Volcano. So I'm just going to share my screen with you now. And here it says making a volcano. And that is what we're going to do. We are going to use a plastic bottle as the inside of our volcano. And what you're going to need as well as your bottle and some tape, you're also going to need some flour, water, and some salt and here we have got what the inside of your volcano is going to look like we're going to have your bottle we're going to put the some newspaper around it and we're going to use these three things the flour the water and the salt to hold all of this newspaper together and that is called paper mache so i'm going to come back to um you seeing me on the screen and I've got lots of the ingredients here. So I'm gonna talk you through how to use um, the different things that I've got in front of me so you can make your own volcano. And then we're gonna talk about the science of how we're going to make it erupt. Now, the paper mache will take uh, you know, a day to dry. Now that the sun's out, um, it should be a little bit quicker, but I wanted to um, not you know, wait for you to do it over the week. I'm going to show you how to make it. You can then leave it to dry and then I'll show you the eruption part separately. So here I've got a huge bottle. The reason why I wanted to use a bottle that isn't something that is the best size is because I wanted to show you how you could use a bottle that you might have around your house that may not look like the bottle in the picture because the one in the picture was a lot smaller and how you can actually use something like this. So I'm just going to take off the label. And I genuinely just finished drinking this lemonade yesterday. Ooh, there we go. Now this bottle is huge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour out some of the lemonade which is left. One moment. I'm just going to go over to my sink and pour that out. And I'm back. And I'm going to cut out the middle to make this a little bit smaller. Now I've done this a few times. It's gonna be a lemonade everywhere. Definitely still some lemonade in there. There we go. So I've actually taken the bottom off of this. And I'm going to now take off this section here. And I'm going to glue this top part to this bottom so it's a little bit shorter. So, maybe to there. If you want to make a really big volcano, you could actually use a bottle this size. But when it comes to erupting it, um, you're going to need a lot more of the liquids that I'll talk about in a moment in order for it to erupt. So now I've got my two things. So I've got like a little baby bottle. However, you do need to stick it together. In the house, I actually only have sellotape, but the best tape is actually masking tape, um, which you probably would have used in primary school. And the reason why it's better is because the paper mache sticks to it slightly better. And I've got the pressure of finding the end of the tape on camera. Yes, done it. Okay. Here we go. Right. So I'm now going to stick the top of this onto the bottom. So this can be a little bit fiddly. Don't worry, I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera because what you might want to do is pause the video, do different bits, and then come back to it. 
this is actually a really fun project to do because you can use household items to do it. Only thing I can imagine is you're not having masking tape. But I wanted to show you that you could do this with what you had in the house. I didn't want to buy anything because that would be cheating. Right, here we go. Tom in there. You don't want any leaks because the lava will come out. Here we go. We have got our bottle. I don't think there's any leaks. We'll find out. So now we've got our inside of our volcano. This is the top. So all of our the stuff that we're going to put in here that's going to erupt will go into the bottle and shoot out. But now this does not look like the volcano that I showed you. So now what we need to do is to actually start putting some paper to it. Now, as I said, I wanted to make this as true to you having the stuff at home. And I have got here. Um, I have got here, just checking it was recording, um, some napkins. Now, I didn't have any newspaper in this house. Well, I couldn't find any. So I thought, let's see if it works with napkins. But newspaper is what I've previously used for this. So as I mentioned before, for the paper mache part, you are going to need some flour. You are going to need a little bit of salt and then some water. So the measurement said one cup. So your um, whoever you live with might have these sort of posh measuring things out if they do any baking. I don't. So I'm literally just going to use a little cup. And it says to put a cup of flour and a cup of water together and you're going to need a little bowl. I've got an old bowl here. Whoa. Messy. OK, so I've got my cup of flour. So we want the amount of flour you have to be equal to the amount of water, roughly. So I'm going to remember it went up to about here. I'm going to pour that in. And close this back up so it doesn't go everywhere. The next thing that I'm going to do is to get my water there with me. Now it's best if the water is warm. So I'm going to let my tap run for a little bit and wait for it to get a bit warm. There we go. So actually looks like I filled this up slightly more than I should have so we'll have to pour it in quite slowly and just see how it goes now what you're going to also want is to have something to stir it in with so I've got um, this spoon the first thing I would say is just make sure there aren't any lumps in your flour because that can actually be a little bit annoying and don't forget there are loads of YouTube videos on these sort of projects that you could watch so I'm going to pour about half of the water in and at the same time dribbling it all over my countertop. And it's going to make a paste. That's what you want. Now this is way too thick. Let me show you. Ugh. That's way too thick. Need a lot more water. So I'm actually going to pour a bit more water in. nice and smooth so it's sort of like this consistency and I actually will probably pour a bit more water in so as you start to use this and I'll show you what you're then going to do with it you'll probably work out the best consistency now there's other recipes for paper mache online because when I've done this previously I don't think I used flour I think I used um, glue and it was PVA glue with water but I didn't have any PVA glue but I did have flour it's a bit lumpy okay so the consistency of this is oh, like this okay so now you need to put in a little bit of salt now the salt 
isn't that important. It's just if you make this and you take an hour to build your volcano, it keeps it um, fresh. So I'm just going to put in a tiny amount of salt. Now I read this online, so it may do nothing, but it won't harm it. So there we go. Super. So now we've got our paper mache mix. Now remember, I don't have any newspaper. So I'm going to use these flowery napkins, which means my volcano will look flowery. However, that's OK, because what you can do is you can make um, you can paint it and stuff afterwards because it goes hard. The only other thing I would say is you might want to have a base. So you might want to have you know, a cardboard or paper at the bottom to sit this on. In fact, I'm going to do that now. And then you can start to build up your volcano. Now, I'm just going to take a little strip and put this inside of my mix. Oh my gosh, it is incredibly slimy. And I'm going to put it on. Now, you'll notice that if it's slightly too much of the um, sort of flowery mix, it may not stick and now keep in mind I'm not using newspaper which is the ideal thing to use but actually it is sticking so what you need to do is you keep building this up on your volcano what I would suggest is getting big rolls of newspaper and what you could do is you could tape it round the bottom and then your bottom would then be bigger or the bottom of your volcano I should say should be larger so that you get this sort of um, shape of a, of a volcano that goes down. So you can keep building this up to make the shape that you want. And then you would leave this to dry um, for a day and this will be rock hard. And then what you can do is you can paint it. So there's some really cool ones online. Um, I don't have any paint, but um, you can do that. So that's the building your volcano part. And now let's talk a little bit about how we are going to make it erupt. So let me just wipe some of the flour and water off my hands. So for the eruption part, ugh, you need some vinegar. I have got three types of vinegar in this house, believe it or not. I've got red wine vinegar. I've got white wine vinegar and I had malt vinegar. I also had this other vinegar. I don't know what it's called. And any vinegar will do. And then we're going to use this it's called bicarbonate of soda now it might be called uh, baking soda in your house but it's both exactly the same so i've got vinegar doesn't matter which type and then i've got uh, bicarbonate of soda so i would practice this with sort of different amounts of them but when you add these two together that's when you're going to get your eruption so the science behind that is this. So you have got, just realised, I wonder if this will be backwards for you, perhaps. So you've got your um, baking soda. It definitely will be backwards for you. And your baking soda has got um, something called sodium bicarbonate in there. And then the sodium bicarbonate reacts with your vinegar which has got some acid in it okay so you're going to have this acting as a base and this as an acid now when acids and bases come together it releases a gas now that gas in this case will be carbon dioxide and it's the carbon dioxide that gets created that makes these bubbles in the liquid and it goes boom so let's see in action so this could be quite dangerous because actually let me use this underneath what i don't want to do is for it to pour everywhere and you'll have to practice with different amounts of the baking soda so what i'm going to do is go get a little spoon one moment So I'm just going to, maybe I'll practice it in another container. One second. Uh, 
OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this cup. And I'm going to put a little bit in it and just see how much it erupts before I start using loads of it. And right, let's do. I'm just going to use just a tiny little bit. OK, I'm going to put it in the glass. I'm going to put a little bit of vinegar. And let's see. Okay, so that is definitely fizzing. It kind of stinky because it's vinegar. What you could actually do is I don't have any food colouring, but you could actually put some like orange food colouring in this. That would be quite cool. So I'm not sure I'd even have enough for it to go all the way up here. However, there's only one way to find out. Wish me luck. What is quite difficult is actually the opening to this is quite small. So actually it might be worth you having a smaller opening. Whoa. As I'm doing this, lots of it is actually going in my cup. Let's hope I don't take up baking anytime soon because I'm not very good at this. Ah, plus I'll have another left. Okay, so I've got loads in here. Um, let's see what happens, guys. I'm going to take a risk. This could go very bad. I would suggest you have a large tray underneath. I'm going to go get a tray. Una momento. will do okay so i have got this large tray i'm going to do the experiment in the large tray and i'm going to move my laptop away so it does not get ruined okay so we've got lots and lots of baking powder we have got the vinegar let's go whoa it's definitely working <laughs> That's very cool. It worked. So this is how you make paper mache volcano. And you now know how to make it erupt. And you know a little bit about the science. You've got your acid in your vinegar, you've got your base and your baking soda. Then you're going to make carbon dioxide gas, which is what all those bubbles are. And then boom, it erupts. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I hope you're all going to try it. See ya.